What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a brand new extension from Fredo 6 for creating two dimensional cutouts of objects with transparent backgrounds. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can find this extension by going to the Sketchication plugin store and searching for Pick to Shape. So Pick to Shape is an extension from Fredo 6 that's specifically designed to take an image with a transparent background, and it's going to generate basically edges or contours around it. So um, it uses the pixel transparency to filter out things that aren't um, materials that are transparent in order to create actual shapes. Now this is super valuable for doing things like creating trees, and you can use it to create other two dimensional things like this fence as well, but it's definitely super valuable for creating face me components. I'm going to show you a really cool application for this in a minute. So one other thing to note about this tool is you do need to make sure that you've downloaded and installed Libfredo in order for this to work. You can access that just by searching for Libfredo in the Sketchcation plugin store by or by opening the link from this page from Fredo um, and getting it that way. And so I've installed this using the Sketchication extension store plugin in order to access it. But once you do that, what you can do is you can right click and you can click on this button right here in order to activate pick to shape. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna import a PNG image with transparency. And so notice how when I do this, I have two options because what I did is I downloaded a full resolution file from the website FreePick. You can really go anywhere and get any image with transparency. It doesn't really matter. But whenever I use this tool, I always reduce the resolution of the images bringing them in because the higher resolutions I found that it spins and the lower resolution I found that it actually works really good. So first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna drag that image in like this. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rotate it so that it's standing up just so you can see it. You don't have to do that. Now, why might we do this? So the reason we might do this is because if I bring this image in and I turn my shadows on right now, so I'm actually not getting any shadows at all. But if I toggle on, um, or if I toggle off, don't cast shadows, then I start getting this in here. The problem is, even though this is a transparent image that you can see through around the edges, it's still not casting accurate shadows in your model. Well, what a pick to shape is gonna do is with this image selected, I can click on it. It's gonna pop up a window right here. Notice how it shows me the resolution over here, but it's gonna give me options for different things that I can do. So I can generate edges, I can generate edges and faces without texturing, or I can do what I want to do, which is I want to generate this textured. So when I click on this, what it's going to do is it's going to come in here and it's going to basically cut out the image like this. Now you might notice you're not getting the shadows cast in here. You actually are. The thing is it creates it right on top of this other image right here. Well, now if I look at this, notice how this tree is actually casting an accurate shadow inside of um, inside of your model right here. So that's super cool um, because now whenever I use this tree, what it's going to do is it's going to cast these shadows in here in a way that reflects the way this would actually work. Now, another cool function about this is notice how not only is there the option to generate with contours, there's also an option on the right hand side to generate a face me component. So what I can do is I can click on this option right here and notice how as soon as it does that it generates a face me component over here so if i move this over right so in this case it actually generates it based centered on the model origin right here well now this is a face me tree in here and that means that i'm getting the shadows but if i'm in the background or something like this so say this was in the background around a house or something like that all of those trees are going to face the camera. So you can use this to create those low poly um, face me components really quickly. And so another cool thing this tool can do is if you run this, right, this is what it looks like right now, but you also have options down below and you can actually do this up above too, but you can also generate this geometry as monochrome. And so when you generate this as monochrome, what it's gonna do is it's just gonna create a two dimensional model like this. And notice how right now this has holes 
in the middle of it, a lot of the time you don't necessarily need that and you can cut down your processing time by, I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way, you can cut down your processing time by taking this tool and unchecking the box right here for generate holes from image. You can also remove tiny contours. So anything uh, slower than this uh, or smaller than this ratio right here, it'll get rid of that in order to reduce your edge count. But now if I generate this as a monochrome, notice how there's no holes in it. And it's simplified my contours to a certain degree. So you can also use this to create two-dimensional cutouts. It's just a white texture associated with them as well. And so while you could go and create transparent images in something like Photoshop, one of the cool things about this tool is it actually has some of that filtering built in. So if you click on the little puzzle piece right here, notice how that's going to find this image. And you'll notice how there's an option over here for filters. So what filters is going to do is it's going to allow you to tell it to remove specified colors. So in this case, I want to discard the white background. So I'm going to click on discard right here. Notice how that pops up this little image right here. You can click on it mouse over this image and find a color. So in this case, I want to mouse over the white and click on it. Well, when I do that, what that's going to do is that's going to filter this whole thing out like this. And notice how, again, you've got the option to do this as a textured face. And when I do that, notice what that did is that created basically a filtered out copy of this fence right here, which could be massively helpful for creating like really quick fences or something like that. And there's not a whole lot of geometry you have to manage in here. So if I was to take this and just create a bunch of copies right here, notice how that's given me this fence with the, all these two dimensional images. And if you really wanted to, you could double click in here and you could actually extrude this out like this because it's just generating fences. So this is somewhat valuable for this kind of fence, but it's incredibly valuable for a fence like this. And so let's say that we wanted to do this. Now, one thing to note about this one, and so there's an option over here for generate holes from the image that we wanna make sure is toggled on. So if there's a black dot, it's toggled on. But in this case, I wanna discard the white from the image right here. And with that holes option on, it's going to go through and it's going to cut this whole thing out. And so now if I generate geometry textured like this, it's going to generate all of those contours in here with the holes. Now notice one thing about this is it does take a little bit to do because there's a lot of geometry for it to process. But now I can use this to create this kind of a fence really quickly inside of SketchUp. And again, since this is a face, I could just extrude it out like this. Now in this situation, notice how it has this image applied to it, which is not especially ideal. No big deal. We can just do a control A. We can pick a solid color. And we'll just pick a black. We'll just apply it to the whole thing. Just for like really quickly generating these cutouts, huge time saver. And so one thing you should know is when you do click in here and you add a filter, notice how there is an option to scroll your mouse wheel up in order to set the tolerance. And you could also filter multiple different colors in here. Now, I try not to get super crazy with that. Most of the time, if I do my crazy filtering, I'm going to do it in Photoshop. But note that you can stack filters on here. So say that I was to filter out like this brown color right here and it's going to process it and again notice that you're, you're going to want to pay attention to um the resolution of your image because this runs really slow with higher resolution images but say that i didn't like where that went and i also wanted to filter out filter out this i can just click in here again to add a second filter like this so you can stack those filters together in order to filter out different things now one thing i would say is i would not recommend using it to try to filter out images like this one. In this one, you're going to be way better off using something like a Photoshop or a Photo P or something like that because they just have better filtering tools. But there's still value there because let's say that we were to take this image right here 
And we're going to bring it into a Photoshop or a Photo P because they just have vastly superior filtering functions even to pick to shape. And you can really quickly mask out the background um, using this tool and then export it to a PNG with a transparent background and use pick to shape to bring this back in with a transparent background that still casts accurate shadows. But now if I drag that image in and stand it up, we could take this image activate pick to shape and we're going to generate this as a face me component right here and that generated component is going to show up over here so we'll move it or model but notice how i've created a face me component that still has kind of the person shadow right here so there's times when the filtering in your photo editing software is going to be better but you can filter that and then bring it in and create this two-dimensional image like this all right so that's where i'm in this video leave a comment below let me know what you think about this tool if it's something you might use i just love having that conversation with you guys and any ideas you have for how you might use it in the future but as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.